Well, what's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor, hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now we are on part two in our series of the SSI Boat Diver Specialty Course. And what we really hope is that this series is going to help you pass your SSI Boat Diver Specialty. But then again, we do want you to go out and seek proper training from your local SSI Boat Diving Instructor. So with that being said, let's jump into chapter two of our series of the SSI Boat Diver Specialty. So the first part in chapter two that we're going to talk about is getting your equipment ready. And as we did in chapter one, we talked about having a checklist for the vessel. You also need a checklist for, say, your equipment. And this is a simple checklist that you can actually find on your SSI app. So simply download the app, go over to more, and you will see the checklist for it. This is going to allow you to go through all your equipment just to make sure that it's serviced and everything is working properly before you go out for a day of diving on, say, either a local charter, a liveaboard, or even your personal craft. Now that we've went over our checklist and we know all the different types of gear that we need when we're out on, a, say, a day charter or even a liveaboard, let's talk about different spare parts that we may need to take with us, whether it's extra fin straps, extra O-rings, little things like that that you can actually change without, say, a technician. Because when you're on a dive boat, you're not going to have much room to actually work, and there's only going to be minor repairs that you're going to have to do. Now, if you're not interested in doing those minor repairs, obviously you can make sure your gear is properly serviced before you go out diving. Now, if you do want to do some of your own repairs, look at the SSI Equipment Techniques course. This is a great course that's going to help you understand your equipment a little bit better and help you also prolong the life of that equipment. And during that course, you're going to learn, learn little tips and tricks about how to service your gear on small little increments. So maybe you need to replace an O-ring on a hose or replace an O-ring on a cylinder, different things like that. That's what the Equipment Techniques course is going to help you. Just remember, you're only going to be able to do minor stuff when you're out on the vessel so it's more important that we keep our gear up to date and service prior to going out for a day of diving off a charter. Now, before you get on a boat, you want to make sure that you pack your gear in an easily to use manner. And you also want to make sure that you're packing it and marketing it as well. I know personally, a lot of our customers, they'll all use, say, the same type of fin, maybe even the same color fin. And we always encourage them to put their initials on it or to mark it. You know, at the end of the dive, a lot of times when you're climbing back on a boat, they just kind of throw all your fins in one big pile and you kind of got to separate to make sure you get the right one. By simply marking your gear, you know that it's yours when you're on that vessel. Now, as far as packing the gear, you want to make sure that you're using the right bag or box to pack with. Now, you guys know I'm a huge Pelican fan and I use all the Pelican series boxes. However, sometimes on charters, that's not the best, say, case to use when you're on a boat. So I like mesh bags when I'm on a boat. And of course, I can mark that mesh bag as well. It's usually got a little tag on it that I can put my name on it and things like that. But the great thing is it doesn't take up much space. Now, a lot of people will use the little crates to put their equipment in and that's a great option as well as long as you can slide that crate say up underneath a bench or put it into an area that it's not going to be intrusive on say someone else but let's talk about how we actually pack it now now that we determine what we're going to be packing our equipment in how should we pack it well first of all you should pack it to where the very first thing you need will be the last thing that you put in so if the last thing i need that'll be the first thing i put in such as fins i tend to put my fins in first and then of course i'll stack things on top of that and then zip up the bag before I get on the boat. Now, once again, once I'm on the boat, if the first thing I need is my BC to attach it to the tank, the BC will be on the top of that bag. I can simply unzip, pull it out, slide it on the tank, and I'm ready to go. So make sure that you're packing it in the proper order and make sure you're packing only the equipment that you actually need. Don't take a lot of extra stuff. A small little spare parts kit is great, but don't take two or three different BCs just for two dives when you're out diving. Next in chapter two, we're going to talk about getting yourself ready to be on that vessel. Now, depending on whether you're, say, on a liveaboard or a day charter or even just your personal boat, do you have the right equipment for you? And I'm not talking about dive gear. I mean, do you have the right equipment? Do you have your hat? Do you have your sunglasses? Have you put on suntan lotion? Things like that that's going to keep you safe and comfortable when you're out there on that vessel. Now, we're going to see very quickly that a lot of times vessels cannot be very stable and there's a lot of motion going on and you may 
actually get a little seasick. Have you properly prepared yourself? Are you in the best of health? Did you eat a proper breakfast or lunch prior to getting on that boat? And do you have a lot of, say, water to stay hydrated? That's one of the biggest downfalls to being on a boat. It is very difficult to stay hydrated sometimes unless you have water. Now, the great news is a lot of day charters and liveaboards is going to have refreshments and things like that for you. But if you're out on your personal vessel, make sure you're taking a cooler with you as well with water, snacks, and drinks and things like that. Next up, we're going to be talking about your actual certification card. Now, back in the day, we all carried those hard plastic cards, and when you paid to get on a charter, some charters would actually take the card from you, and then when, at the end of the day, when you got back on land, they would hand you your card back, and that was kind of their checklist. Nowadays, most charters don't do that. They will accept some type of digital card. Your SSI digital card is accepted all over the world, and one of the great things about it is they can permanently keep it on file. I know a lot of the destinations I go to, when they ask to See my card, I'll actually show them one of my instructor cards, but I'll email them a copy of my digital card and they can keep it on file with my waivers as well. We're going to learn very quickly towards the end of this that there's a lot of waivers and paperwork that have to be filled out prior to getting on a charter. Well, simply by doing it digitally, they can have a permanent copy of it and you don't really run the risk of losing your card when you're out on dive charters. However, let's talk about the dive card. Which dive card should you show when you get on a charter? Well, it really depends on the type of diving you're doing. I would strongly suggest whatever type of diving that you're doing, show that specific card. So if you're going out to make some deep dives, show your deep diver card. If you're going out to do some wreck dives, show your wreck diver card. If you're going out and you're just solo diving, show your solo card. Or if you're teaching off that vessel, show your instructor card. That way that crew is going to understand that you are properly trained and educated on how to make these dives safely. And of course, that's all this is about is staying safe when we're out on a dive boat. Now, if it has been a while since you've been diving, I would strongly encourage you to take a scuba skills update. Get up with your local SSI training center and tell them, hey, I got certified several years ago, but I've not made so many dives in the last few years. I would really like a scuba skills update. Basically, your SSI instructor is going to sit down with you, review some of the academics that you went over during your open water program, and even go to the pool with you and do a set of skill sets. This time of the year, we do a ton of scuba skill update courses for people who they'll get certified in the summer, they don't really dive throughout the winter, and of course they want to get back in it the next summer. So we do scuba skills update for them, and it's just a way for you to refresh your skills and refresh, refresh your knowledge on the basic scuba physics that you need to understand just to stay safe while diving. Now, I did mention earlier about staying healthy when you're on a vessel and not getting seasick, and this is something that plagues me. I typically always get seasick on a boat, and even though I grew up on a boat, I still get seasick. And there's ways that we can actually prevent that or make it a little bit more comfortable for us when we're out there. First of all, make sure you eat a good, healthy breakfast or lunch, depending on when you're going out on the boat. You want to make sure that you eat a full meal, but not a heavy meal, not a lot of heavy grease. Eat light food. Salads are great. Eggs are great things like that that's going to give you protein and give you strength when you're out there. Also, you may need to take some type of medication, say, such as Dramamine or some other type of generic motion sickness medication. Me personally, I like Dramamine. I typically take one or two as soon as I wake up that morning, and I'll take one about 30 minutes before I get on the vessel, and that usually does me over. And I'm usually pretty good. As long as we're not in extremely heavy seas, say up to five or six foot seas, which can be heavy, I'm pretty good. Anything above that, of course, I'll get seasick very quickly. But the truth of the matter is, if the seas are that heavy, you probably don't want to go out that day diving because it's not going to be a comfortable dive. You're going to be rocking and rolling all over that boat. It's not going to really be safe to secure your equipment on the boat. So make sure that you're picking the right days for you to go out diving. A nice, smooth, calm day is what we're all after to stay safe while we're out enjoying our day diving. So as I mentioned earlier, you want to make sure that you are doing your research before you get on that vessel, or even more so before you pay to get on that vessel. There's a lot of different types of charters out there. You've got recreational charters, you've got deep charters, you've got technical charters, you've got side mount charters, you've got rebreather charters, then you've got charters that allow just about anybody on there. But do your research. I know a lot of the charters that we use for open water, they will not allow side mount systems on a boat. They're not versed with it, they don't understand it, and they also won't allow rebreathers 
on there to where our more technical advanced charters that we take our customers out on, they don't really want those open water students on there. So make sure that you are doing your research to see which vessel is going to be right for you. Now, ask that charter system, hey, this is what I want to go dive. When is the best time to do it? They are going to be your best resource because they constantly take divers out there. And if they're your best resource, there's no real reason why you shouldn't be asking them the best time to go to a specific site. Now, one of the things that your SSI boat diving instructor is going to go over with you is different terminologies for the vessel. This is going to help you navigate around that vessel safely and more efficiently, such as bow, stern, uh, port, starboard, leeward, windward, head, wheelhouse. All these different terminologies are going to be thrown at you. However, your SSI boat diving instructor is going to break it down to where it's easy for you to understand. And you really do need to understand these terminologies so that you can help navigate safely and efficiently when you're on board of a charter or even say your personal vessel. So guys, that's going to do it for chapter two in our series of the SSI Boat Diver Specialty. And like I said, we really think this series is going to help you not only pass your SSI Boat Diver course, but it's also going to give you a little bit better knowledge for when you're actually out on a charter, whether it's a liveaboard, your own personal vessel, or even a typical day charter like most of us use. Guys, if you like this video series, give me a big thumbs up. If you've got any questions on chapter two, drop me a comment down below. Please make sure you're seeking out proper training from your local SSI Boat Diving Instructor before you go get on a boat and go out diving off of it. Guys, stay tuned. We still got three more videos left in this series, and we really think it will help you in the future. But until our next one, take care, God bless, and I'll see you in the next video.